There's a number of stories ongoing at the moment. Uh, there's a story, there's various things which are happening in uh, Russia and Ukraine, which I'll talk about later on. Um, and there's also the story in uh, London uh, from Westminster Bridge. And th this happened yesterday morning, 10.45, reports emerged of a violent altercation involving a man believed to have been stabbed, and police swarmed the bridge, ambulances descended, air ambulance service landed with precision, underscoring the severity of the situation. Tourists with their cameras uh, were soon documenting not landmarks but emergency crews uh, in action. And the initial reports painted a grim picture, a stabbing, an attempted murder, a man fighting for his life. Such news conjures a mix of fear, a resignation, um, and uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the middle of a busy city, speculation ran rampant. Uh, was this another targeted attack, a random act of violence, or something more sinister? And the arrests of three individuals for attempted murder and another for a fray uh, has fueled public imagination. As investigations deepen, the plot seems to have thickened, or rather untangled. By the afternoon, the Metropolitan Police clarified that the victim had not been stabbed at all. The man tragically had suffered a heart attack in the middle of a fight, and a situation that had initially been cloaked in the language of crime now veers into the realm of a medical emergency. It's a stark reminder of how quickly facts can change in the face of limited information and heightened anxiety. The speed with which initial reports circulated underscores our society's obsession with instant news and speculation, and this haste sometimes comes at the expense of accuracy. Social media lit up with cries of another violent attack in London, only to later delete, amend or reframe their comments. The contrast between the reality of a heart attack and the assumption of a stabbing highlights the tension between the immediacy and the truth and a sort of blame culture that we seem to have descended into. Uh, what does this incident tell us? First, about policing. The Metropolitan Police are acted swiftly, cordoning off the area, investigating thoroughly, revising public information fairly quickly. And secondly, about healthcare. The man owes his survival to the rapid response of emergency crews who worked under the assumption of a stabbing proving that sometimes over-preparation saves lives. Thirdly, uh, about humanity, our propensity, or British humanity, our propensity to assume the worst, refer reflects a collective vulnerability to fear, stoked up, of course, by international tension, particularly in places as symbolic as Westminster. Yes, questions linger. What caused the man's heart attack during the altercation, were the arrested individuals responsible for this condition, or were they equally caught in the maelstrom of speculation and crisis? What role did the atmosphere of tension in central London create in escalating this incident? The Westminster Bridge story is just more than a news item. It's a snapshot of how we have begun to react to crises, how we communicate in the follow-up to a crisis, how we should learn to temper urgency with caution, and in our rush to understand, we often misunderstand, and we are misfed information. But with each unfolding event, we have the opportunity to do better, to investigate, to clarify, to focus on the human lives at the heart of the chaos. So, we should leave this incident this morning, I think, not with fear, but with a commitment to truth, resilience, a collective sense of responsibility. For Westminster Bridge um, is more than just a thoroughfare. It's a place where history happens. And today where, um, where well, last night, where we saw, yesterday, where we saw complexity at its highest, um, and we could do better, really, couldn't we? We could do better in an age of modern communication. The obfuscation, the 
uh, a desperation for a story and a finger of blame is intoxicating, isn't it? 